And now, please welcome the athletes to the field of play for the recurve men semifinal matchup number two. One more semifinal to come here in Hermosillo. It's down to the shooting line to meet the contenders. On target number one, representing Italy, Mauro Nespoli. On target number two, representing Brazil, Marcus Almeida. The line judge for this matchup is Carlos Cervantes. Well, a huge matchup here. The last time they met was at the Paris stage just a few weeks back. The bronze medal match for Dalmeida won in a shoot-off, shooting a 10 to Nespoli's 9. Nespoli, though, we know is a big game player. They met as well at the Tokyo 2020 Olympic Games. And Nespoli won 6-0. World number one, Brasilia Dalmeida, to get the semi final underway. 10. Ten. It shows that we're off to a, a match that I think is going to be amazing here. Dalmeida not having a quite so smooth execution in the first shot, but still in the 10. Ten. This one looking much better and with the same result. Nespoli now needs to respond. Eight. Well, you can do the maths. Odds on for Dalmeida to win, but a little bit nine. of Bo Kwondo does just enough to stay in the nine. A rueful smile there for the Brazilian world number one. Nine. Well, set number one, shifting in favor of Brazilian archer Marcus. Well, Nespoli looked a little confused about the eight. Yeah, but um, to be honest, I think his release was very good. Uh, and I'll make the room on the side of relief because I thought that, one, he, he thought that one, he thought that one was going uh, possibly out of the goal, just clipped to the nine, but uh, good enough for him. Now I'm, I'm really curious, um, he is on his own, he has to travel on his own, but uh, he impresses me just the same. He has the scope over there in the box, funnily enough, just to check his groups in between ends. But uh, yeah, a little clip uh, from Nespoli and he rolled Hold his eyes as we can see on the replay because he needs his to do better than that to challenge Dalmeida. The two of them have experience of the gold medal match at uh, the Highlander Archery World Cup Finals. Moscow 2019. Espelit taking the silver medal, losing to Ellison 6 2. All the way back to 2014 for Dalmeida's silver medal performance in Lausanne. Eight. Another eight, and that one wide of the mark. He doesn't understand, and well, I think it's bad for him. He doesn't have anybody behind him in the shooting line to at least to try to see what's going on. Nine. Maybe the wind, and we see Dalmeida the drifting in the same direction, almost out of the gold. Ten. Made the correction. Lifting his eyebrows must have been the wind. All of a sudden, the group shifted. It seemed like a very good execution by him. Eight. And again, so it looks like even the wind's dropped right off, and they've adjusted after the first arrows went high and right. 26 set. Nine. 26 also for Dalmeida. 
They square the points in the second set. Almeida maintains a two-point lead, but curious to say the least. It has been changeable, the wind. It has, it has. I thought it was going to be like last night that it was pretty much constant once they made the saddle win, but uh, clearly we see these archers drifting, which I think is quite a lot because uh, Aaron Aspel, he's famous for having a lot of, like, for having a very strong and heavy bow, so it tends not to drift as much with the wind and everything. And Almeida, he also shoots with a very strong bow, so to see them drifting this much is really surprising. Getting ready to get us underway on target number one. Bit of confusion for the pair of them. Almeida is going to be the happier of the two with a 3 1 lead. Nespoli starts set number three. Just out Eight. too long, even for Naspoli's standards. Nine. Both going away. The conditions are changing so quickly, but uh, in a subtle manner, I think it's really hard to read what's going on. Ten. Naspoli back in the middle. Of them fighting the conditions at the moment as well as each other. Eight. Wow, the door opens for Nespoli, and perhaps he never thought it would. Nine. So a 27 set could get marked up to a 28, depending on that first arrow measure. Didn't look nine. happy with that one, and a nine from him for a 26, and the measure matters well, not other than for the record books. Mario Nespoli in what is proving to be a very tricky match for the pair of them. Looks like he's leveled up. Yes, yes, very tricky conditions indeed. Both of them trying to... As we try to see confirmation over there, but uh, it's not going to make any difference anyway. Yes, it did seem like an eight when we first saw it, but it doesn't make any difference anyway. We have a level match here, three-three. Um, just both archers, you know, trying to navigate these challenging conditions, and worse than that, the bad news for Dalmeida is that he clearly wasn't comfortable in his previous two shots. <laughs> we'll get a quizzical look from Mauro Nespoli. But of the two, given what you've just said, you'd have to now fancy Nespoli. He never thought he was going to be level after the third set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he is surprised and lucky for him because Dalmeida gave him a good opportunity. Only six arrows left in this match. Let's see how it turns out. Well, for the first time in the men's recurve competition, we are guaranteed a full five sets. It's the start of the fourth, and Dalmeida shoots first. Ten. That was more like his shot, very smooth, quick execution, looked very confident. Eight. We can say Maron Aspoli has been lucky so far, but he can't count on luck until the end of this match if he wants to win. Nine. Now looking to the skies for divine intervention. An eight puts this out of reach. Oh, looks like it might well be a nine. It's called a ten in venue. A nine would be enough for the points. Nine. 
26 there from Nespoli. And Marcus Dalmeida re-establishes the lead with a 29 and looking back on the form he was in in the quarterfinals and at the beginning of this match. Yes, yes, he managed to find his way back very quickly and very well. And um, it it's, it's just crazy it is to is see how both archers they seem to quite spread over here. the target. Uh, judge just checking is to confirm that one, but it doesn't it make any difference. Oh, I think we have confirmation like it's a nine. Um, but now Mauro Nasbolo, he needs to win the fifth set, as you pointed out. It's the first time we're going to have a fifth set tonight. And uh, he needs to win it to force a shootout. And not long ago, in Paris, just a month ago, these two, they shot a shootout for bronze medal, and it went down this way. Marcus Dalmeida shot for gold at the World Cup final against Brady Ellis. Nespoli has had a tricky few sets here. Somehow he managed to level up with a 27 in the third. A 26 in the fourth. Means Dalmeida goes into that fifth and final regulation set very much in charge. Nespoli will shoot first in a must-win set for him. Well, that's the start he wanted. to force the shoot off for Nespoli. Nine. Gets the nine he needed for a 29, his highest score so far in the match and he's leveled up at five apiece. Dalmeida gets the advantage of a rehearsal for the shoot off and he puts it into the 10 for a 28. But we knew this was going to be a tight one. We didn't expect the conditions to play such the part they did, but it does mean that we've got a five-all semi-final here between Dalmeida and Nespoli, and the target faces will be replaced as we will have our first shoot-off of the men's competition. He has the first shoot-off of the night, and um, it's going to be a tricky one. Both archers need to think this one through to decide where they're going to aim. This is going to be critical here. Um, just the last thing you should do is overthink uh, and take too long, as we saw uh, Lim Shihyun do in the semi-final against Alejandro Valencia earlier today in the women's competition. So right now, you just pick a spot and trust it. Just trust your process, and as I said last time, it went all made this way, but I'm sure Mauro Naspoli we want to advance to the gold medal final. The only thing. We're getting fresh target faces set up as we speak. Our craft team of volunteers performing. Wonderful. Let's go to the mind of the athletes now. I mean, they, 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 they're both experienced. They've both had shoots off before, most recently in Paris. Um, but what, what are you thinking at the moment? Or are you trying not to think about anything? No, uh, I, I, I think it's so personal. But me, I would be just thinking about the one crucial point of my fault, my shot execution. So yeah, you just think about, you know, one thing that you want to nail it in your shot and just trust that the rest will follow. Well, target faces refreshed. Music pumping out here in front of the government palace of Sonora. Pressure on these two experienced athletes cannot be higher than right now. One arrow to decide who makes it 
into the gold medal match at the season finale. Dalmeida from Brazil, the world number one, will go first. Nine. A nine. In these conditions, that does not mean it's over. But Nespoli does have a chance. A nine, and that looks like it may well be further away. Dalmeida wanted it. It's clearly closer. Uh, luck was on his side. You don't want to count on luck on such a, such situations, but uh, it went Dalmeida's way. His shot seems to have been a good execution for me, while on the other hand, I think Nesbury took a little bit too long. He knew that he had everything to shoot a 10, but just went was further than Dalmeida's, and now we have a repeat of the final of the Youth Olympic Games like in 2014, Dalmeida can possibly finally have his revenge against the Russo. Well, what a match that was. <laughs> Dalmeida versus Nespoli promised a lot. 5-5 after five sets and a 9-9 shoot-off. Closer arrow for Dalmeida and the Brazilian is through to the gold medal match.